Since its first incarnation as a children's book series back in 1986, the Magic School Bus has been delighting and educating the world's youth. Lucky for us, Netflix got the bus up and running again in 2017 with an all-new reboot called The Magic School Bus Rides Again. Greetings class, Adrian here with Channel Frederator, and today's lesson is Then vs. Now The Magic School Bus. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. <laughs> New characters. One of the biggest changes to the Magic School Bus is the passing of the torch, or keys rather, to a brand new Miss Frizzle. That's right, in the reboot, Valerie Felicity Frizzle has now gotten her PhD and retired from teaching at Walkerville. She promptly hands the reins over to her younger sister Fiona, which should make it easy on the class as they don't have to learn a new name. Not to worry though, as the old Miss Frizzle, or Frizzle Classic as I like to call her, is still featured in the new series as a producer in the Q&A segments. Fiona is similar to her sis, she has red hair, a joyful commitment to education, and colorful clothing choices, but is voiced with great abandon by recent Ghostbuster and SNL MVP Kate McKinnon. Other celebrity voices to look out for include Sideways Sandra O oh and Arrested Development's own Will Arnett. However, the shakeups of the classroom don't just end with a new teacher. The character of Phoebe has been written out of the show as she gets transferred back to her old school. She's replaced by a new classmate named G.O.T., who is enthusiastically greeted by Fiona Frizzle on her first day. G.O.T. is the resident tech whiz of the Walkerville class and fits in perfectly with Arnold, Keisha, Ralphie, and the rest of the original students. It should also be noted that since Liz, Professor Frizzle's ever-present pet chameleon, gets left with her younger sister's class, keeping it exotic as only she can, Professor Frizzle is now the proud owner of a monkey named Goldie who hangs out on her shoulder. Heh, <laughs> classic Frizzle. New voices. The problem with having primarily child-aged actors on the show is that eventually the child voice actors are going to grow up and get deeper voices, which means that the Magic School Bus Rides Again introduces a whole new swath of vocal talent for the classroom. Nickelodeon legend Danny Tamborelli, aka Little Pete from The Adventures of Pete and Pete, was the original voice of Arnold in seasons two through four. He replaced the original Arnold voice actor, Amos Crawley. Sadly, Walkerville's resident worrywart will no longer be voiced by Tamborelli. We understand though, we all need to grow up sometimes. Fans of the original, however, will note that comic legend Lily Tomlin Prizes her role as Valerie Frizzle, which is a good move, as her role in the original version earned her a daytime Emmy back in 1995. New Direction The reboot appears to be more concerned with technology to greater reflect our current tech-reliant society. The titular bus even gets a modern makeover. Well, as modern a makeover as you can give a sentient automobile that can squash and stretch at will. According to press releases, it does stress modern inventions such as robotics, wearables, and camera technology. This can be seen through the addition of present-day conveniences like tablets and blogs being used as plot devices in various episodes. Worry not though, as the new series still teaches things along the way. This includes mainstay magic school bus subjects like earth sciences, such as episodes focusing on volcanoes and weather, and the human body. You didn't think we were gonna go a whole season without shrinking the bus down and sipping around Ralphie's bloodstream, did you? Classic. New animation. While the magic school bus rides again exists in the same canonical universe as its predecessor, there's a noticeable change in animation style. The original series was animated by Canadian company Nelvana, which also gave us Little Bear, The Fairly Odd Parents, Scare Bears, and countless other nostalgic favorites. Though it wasn't the most subversively animated show in the block, it had a warm, cell-animated feel that was unassuming and comforting to the eye. Not to mention, it looked almost exactly like the illustrations in the picture book series that spawned it. The Magic School Bus Rides Again utilizes a more stilted and unmistakably flash feel of animation, most likely to keep costs down. A sour Washington Post opinion laments, the reboot has saddled its talents with the plastic facial expressions of a children's Barbie or Bratz ad. It's as if the artists have embalmed the soul of the show beneath the most plastic of pixels. The production company this time around is Nine Story Media, another Canadian company. According to Nine Story CEO Vince Camisso, I have a deep connection to the brand and a profound respect for its vision. We are so excited to work with Scholastic and Netflix and remake this wildly popular series for a whole new generation of kids. Nine Story seems to have a penchant for helping resurrect classic PBS programming. They produced the Mr. Rogers continuation, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, and have plans to relaunch Barney the Dinosaur. New format. Another new aspect of the Magic School Bus Rides Again is the fact that episodes tend to focus on specific students. Each member of Miss Frizzle's class gets an episode when they're in the spotlight. Whether it's Carlos's uncontrollable sneezing or Tim's time capsule bound comic book, the focus shifts from one pupil to another, letting the viewer get to know the characters a bit deeper and allowing their personalities to get fleshed out. This is really hammered home in the credits, which lists the actor who portrays the episode's featured student in their own standalone card and bunching the rest of the voice actors together in a separate one. In addition, the pick and choose nature of Netflix streaming allows us to watch larger chunks of the series at one time, as opposed to the old days where we were beholden to the whims of whoever was programming PBS. And there's good news for the fans of the original series, it's also streaming on Netflix. So you can watch both. New music. Though the Peter Lurie composed theme song remains the same catchy call to arms that we all grew up with, there's a new singer behind the mic. The former Little Richard version has been traded in for a new cover by Hamilton scribe Lin-Manuel Miranda. It's a bit synthier and driven more by drum machine than by boogie woogie piano, but it's still a fabulous tune and Manuel Miranda can certainly match Little Richard's vocal intensity. 
intensity, which is admittedly really saying something. The guy was the architect of rock and roll. Oh, and don't worry. There are still plenty of horn honks as the spine of the song. Possibly more horn honks than the average theme song, but don't quote me on that. New criticism. Like the old adage goes, there's three things you should never discuss at the dinner table. Politics, religion, and mid-90s cartoon nostalgia. It's a harsh truth to reckon with, but reimagining a beloved property now that all of its former viewers are of adult age is definitely going to saddle you with some internet backlash. And that's exactly what happens when Netflix dropped the Magic School Us Rides Again trailer back in September. Former fans didn't take long to air their grievances with a new animation style and the replacement of Miss Frizzle with her slightly more conventional looking sister. At one point, Netflix pulled the trailer, and some YouTube users speculated it was due to the downvote ratio exceeding that of the upvotes. Yikes. One Entertainment Weekly article was especially critical of the new Frizzle's look, which confines a clothing pattern that illustrates a day's lesson specifically to her skirt and pendant. The original Miss Frizzle tended to deck herself head to toe entirely with duds that let you know what kind of info you'd be absorbing that episode. The Entertainment Weekly article bemoans, Did this new younger Miss Frizzle not inherit her older sister's penchant for crafting? Is she a J. Crew acolyte who only knows how to wear one statement piece at a time? I don't know, but these simple red ballet flats and plain blue sweater are breaking my heart. But hopefully people will soften once they see that the general feel of the new show is a natural extension of the old. We're still in the same classroom, we're still learning lessons both about the world around us and the importance of friendship, and we're still at the mercy of a possibly insane teacher with a bus that practically has a mind of its own. It's important to keep in mind that the role of the reboot is to introduce a whole new generation of fans to the Walkerville Elementary, and not just cater to the desire of the old fans. Case in point, it's about the children, people. Think of the children! And there you go. I'm Adrian, and thanks for watching Then vs. Now, The Magic School Bus. How else do you think The Magic School Bus has changed? Have you watched a new one? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We have videos dropping every week, so make sure to subscribe, because remember, Frederator loves you.